my mother is Jewish. Um, and you know we have we have great we have great Jewish dinners like Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. First of all, I live in an all Jewish area, Forest Hill. Okay. I went to I went to a predominantly Jewish school. Yeah, I knew it wasn't like advertised. Mass so people, had to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. people yeah. had to go kind of find out about me. Man, I just got to be a good rapper. But you know, to a lot of other people, they were like, wait, what? Wait, 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 what? You're Canadian? You're Jewish? And you're half? You know, it's just like mind blowing things to them. Um, but like I said, yeah, I don't think that, you know, it wasn't like on my mixtape cover, it just said like the new Canadian half black Jewish. Like he, he made for I'm made for So you in jail, he's supposed to contact your manager yeah. and then what he, happened? He, I mean, he, he dropped a video, a preview night in Amsterdam with some, with some, with some from, from the UK. <laughs> I counter attack. I always counter attack. I don't initiate things. I always counter attack. Just like in this situation, no matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody says, I'm not, bro, I didn't initiate shit. This ran off of my shit. Everybody knew he ran off of my shit. Hey, my bro, nobody's gonna openly disrespect the fuck out of me and disrespect my craft. When I'm, bro, I'm 19 years old. That motherfucker, what, what is he like, 60? He like 65? Or isn't he, didn't he get like surgery on, on his arms or some shit? Didn't he get like plastic surgery? Then you go see like Dr. 300 like three times? <laughs> but what the fuck? You think I'm gonna let you take my shit and not say nothing? You can suck my Poor ex died, he said, if anybody is straight. And do you think that for one moment, here today, days after the event, he said two masked men, right? He came out on social media and said, God, it's poor you guys, if anybody is straight, do you think in that time? Hell of a story. Three young black men were almost lynched by a biker gang. Put out the picture. Recent events suggest Drake remains undeterred despite Kendrick Lamar's public humiliation. Once again, Drake is stirring controversy by suggesting that criticism from black Americans stems from discomfort with a Jewish Canadian dominating the hip-hop scene. This provocative stance has reignited scrutiny over Drake's perceived cultural insensitivity and his selective appropriation of black American culture. Accusations range from trivializing black trauma to disrespecting black women and affiliating with figures known for racism. Despite these controversies, Drake persists in framing criticism as rooted in his mixed heritage rather than his treatment of black culture. Critics argue that Drake's issues with black America transcend race, nationality, or religion, focusing instead on his exploitation of black culture for personal gain without adequate respect. The ongoing feud with Kendrick Lamar, who accused Drake of cultural exploitation and labeled him a colonizer underscores this divide. Lamar's critique resonates with fans who perceive Drake's engagement with black culture as opportunistic, leveraging aspects for image enhancement before moving on. Drake's contentious role in hip-hop has sparked debate for years, with allegations of cultural appropriation persisting among artists like Earl Sweatshirt, Rick Ross, and Pusha T. Their criticisms depict Drake as a culture vulture accused of adopting and discarding elements of black culture at will. Adding fuel to the fire, Drake has faced accusations of appropriating flows from fellow artists, most notably the late XXTentacion. Their public feud erupted when XXTentacion accused Drake of lifting his flow from Look At Me for Drake's track KMT on the 2017 mixtape More Life in a February 2017 interview with XXL Magazine. XX Tentacian expressed disappointment that Drake hadn't acknowledged him, suggesting it could have made a significant difference during his legal troubles. While XX Tentacian was incarcerated on felony charges, he voiced how a personal gesture from Drake could have positively impacted his situation. Instead, tensions escalated after XX Tentacian's release from jail, leading to public confrontations with Drake and his OVO crew. Initially maintaining silence amid the controversy, Drake appeared to take the high road. However, speculation grew among fans that behind the scenes, Drake might have exerted pressure on XX Tentacion. This suspicion intensified when, in February 2018, just four months before his tragic death, XX Tentacion posted on his Instagram story, If anyone tries to kill me, it was Drake. I'm snitching right now, XX Tentacion later claimed his account was hacked, but during his trial, one of the defense attorneys referenced XX Sintashin's IG story, alleging Drake's involvement, suggesting authorities should investigate Drake's connection to the case. Fans of XX Sintashin have pointed out perceived hints from Drake regarding his connection to XX Sintashin's murder in several songs, 
In I'm Upset release just a month before XXTentacion's death, Drake raps, XSMS Triple X. That's the only time I ever shoot below the neck, which some interpreted as alluding to the plot against XXTentacion. After XXTentacion's passing, Drake released Mob Ties where he raps, Louis bags in exchange for body bags a line many took as a direct reference to the incident where XXTentacion's LV bag, containing cash, was taken by his assailant. Continuing with potential references, Drake's 2023 collaborative album with 21 Savage, her loss features the track on BS where Drake appears to again touch on his conflict with XX Stentashin, rapping, maybe I should break that 20, do a 10 if he held his tongue on that lev. He'd be alive again Drake's repetition of the number 10, symbolized by X in Roman numerals, alongside references to someone no longer alive after dissing him on IG Live, fuel speculation among fans about Drake's indirect commentary on XX Tentacion's fate. Now, turning to another controversial incident involving Drake, let's revisit the photos where he posed in blackface. Taken by photographer David Lees in 2007, these images surfaced during Drake's early days pursuing acting, before his pivot to rap stardom. The photos later became the cover art for Pusha T's diss track The Story of Adidon sparking widespread backlash. In response, Drake attempted to mitigate the controversy by claiming the blackface was intended to shed light on the historical mistreatment of black actors in entertainment. However, his explanation failed to quell the uproar. In a statement, Drake wrote, The photos were meant to critique the depiction of African Americans in entertainment, highlighting our frustrations with industry biases. Yet, despite this explanation, questions arise about Drake's use of slavery references in his lyrics. For instance, in Slime You Out from his 2023 album For All the Dogs He Rapped, he whipped and chained you like American slaves juxtaposing images of luxury with historical trauma. Similarly, in his diss track aimed at Kendrick Lamar, Family Matters Drake employed another slavery reference, you always rapping like you bout to get the slaves free this pattern of using American slavery, as a lyrical motif has drawn criticism for trivializing a deeply painful history. And here's the crux of the matter. Drake seems quick to jest about black pain and trauma. Yet it's clear he wouldn't treat the tragedies of his mother's heritage with the same irreverence. As one fan pointedly remarked, Drake making light of the emancipation of slaves reveals his ignorance of our ancestors, our black suffering, and the horrors of slavery. Imagine if Kendrick Lamar joked about burning tattoos with Drake's Holocaust ancestors' numbers. It wouldn't be funny, would it, white boy? Black suffering isn't a joke. Moreover, fans have observed Drake cozying up to controversial figures known for racist behavior, whether it's country star Morgan Wallen, caught using racial slurs on video, or affiliations with the notorious Hells Angels biker gang, Drake's associations raise eyebrows. Recently, Rick Ross reportedly clashed with Drake's associates in Vancouver, where tensions flared backstage over Kendrick Lamar's diss track Not Like Us Allegedly. Local disapproval led to a scuffle involving Ross and his crew. Here's where things take a dark turn. Rumors suggest members of the Hells Angels were involved in the altercation. Drake has maintained ties with the Hells Angels, acknowledging them in songs and on social media. However, the Hells Angels have a troubling history of racially motivated violence. In a disturbing incident last September, three members were implicated in a brutal attack on three young black men, described as an attempted lynching. Later, Drake faced scrutiny for liking a post about the assault on Rick Ross by white assailants, prompting podcaster Don Brown to share a photo of Drake wearing a Hells Angels shirt. In his caption, Brown criticized Drake's association with the gang, stating, Rick Ross was attacked by a racist Canadian gang linked to the Hells Angels, with racial slurs reportedly used during the incident. Drake openly supports the Hells Angels and should publicly denounce white supremacy and affiliated gangs, Investigations should scrutinize Drake's ties to Hell's Angels leader Andrew Carew and the Hand Human Gang Andrew Carew, a controversial Canadian millionaire known for lavish parties and a criminal record including charges of possession and domestic violence, is allegedly involved in dubious activities akin to those of Diddy. Adding to the controversy, internet investigators claim Carew maintains close relations with the Hell's Angels, a connection Drake reportedly leverages for street credibility. Drake notably featured Karu in the music video for his diss track Family Matters, but the revelations didn't stop there. In a troubling video circulating online, a DJ in Dubai lambasts Kendrick Lamar for purportedly belittling black American rappers and their fans. 
The DJ, whose remarks verge on racially insensitive, credits Drake as the real unifying force in the West Coast hip-hop scene, overshadowing Kendrick's influence. Recently, Drake was caught liking a controversial video, sparking intense backlash from fans who accused him of disrespecting the culture and community that has supported him for years. Many argue that this incident only reinforces Kendrick Lamar's criticism of Drake as a colonizer suggesting Drake lacks genuine respect for the African-American community he profits from. One fan commented, Plenty of biracial and non-black artists are embraced by black American fans. Drake's excuses for his setbacks ring hollow. Instead of acknowledging Kendrick's superior talent as a lyricist and rapper, Drake deflects blame another fan echoed, exactly. Now he's blaming the very fans who propelled his success. It's disappointing, like watching a colonizer in action. What are your thoughts on this ongoing debate about Drake and his remarks on race and nationality? Share your comments below and stay tuned for the next video.